The story begins with a couple of dinosaurs that are waiting for their children to be hatched out of their eggs. Their daughter Libby is hatched first, then their son Buck, who is very naughty, he even grabs a stick to beat his father's leg. In fact, he is so active that Henry has to stop him from crashing the last of the eggs. Lastly, their youngest son is Arlo, who is timid and afraid to get out of his egg. All three siblings come out of their eggs and start playing with each other. They see the snow mountain in front of their house. Their parents show them their farm and say they will take care of it together. As the years go by, the children grow up and they help their parents work the farm. Arlo grows up as well, but he is very weak. In fact, he is so afraid that the chicken chase after him. He is also clumsy and causes his mother to lose her balance and ruin her work. Meanwhile, Buck and Libby have no problem doing their chores, and they also spend some time messing with each other. The mother fills up a basket with corn and tells Arlo to go and feed the chicken. Arlo walks hesitantly towards the chicken and, once he is inside their space, he sees a little one of them being trapped. He frees the little chicken but then he is attacked by one of the older ones. He runs out of there in a frenzy, and his father grabs him with his tail before Arlo ends up in the river, also mentioning that he has to be more careful. When his father asks him what is going on, Arlo replies that the chicken are mean and he doesn't like them. Right next, the father fills the silo up with corn and he gathers the whole family around it, telling them that he has made this silo bulletproof so that the critters can't get inside and eat their food. After the two parents put their marks on the silo, the children want to do the same but the father clarifies that it is not that simple, and they have to earn their mark by doing something significant, something bigger than themselves. Gradually, Buck does a good job around the farm while growing up, and his parents are proud of him, while at the same time, Arlo is still being chased by the chicken. In any case, Buck becomes the first of the siblings to put his mark on the silo. Next, Libby earns her mark as well by doing hard work plowing the fields. Seeing all of his family's marks on the silo, Arlo is dedicated to earn his own mark and he walks in the coop with lots of courage in order to feed the chicken. However, he sees Buck laying there and being in a bad condition. Buck tells him that he got attacked by the mean chicken and prompts Arlo to tell their mother that he loves her, moments before hitting Arlo with his tail and scaring him to death. Arlo is angry at his brother for messing up with him and tries to push him, but he lacks the strength. Arlo blames Buck for messing with him, but Buck blames Arlo that he messes up his own chores along with everybody else's. The family gathers around and the mother tells Arlo that he is going to make it eventually and put his mark on the silo, but Arlo replies he doesn't care about it and walks away. One night, Arlo's father wakes him up in the middle of the night and tells him to follow after him. Arlo is hesitant but follows his father outside in the dark. His father tells him to walk in the field and Arlo takes some cautious steps. Soon, a bug lands on Arlo's beak and he gets scared. But his father blows the bug calmly and it is revealed to be a butterfly. His father tries to explain that the most beautiful things in life are found right on the other side of fear. He starts running through the field and dozens of butterflies fly into the air. After they are done playing, the father tells Arlo that he got an idea about how Arlo can earn his mark, if he still wants to earn it. The next morning, his father gives Arlo a task that will help him earn his mark, and that is to catch the critters that steal their food from the top side of the silo. After they set up the trap, the father explains that Arlo will have to wait for the critter to get caught inside the trap, and he should finish the job by hitting it with a piece of wood. Arlo pretends to be a soldier, and he will not allow anything to slip under his nose, but his bravery lasts until something gets caught in the trap. However, it is not a critter but rather a human boy. Arlo is scared of the boy because he is aggressive but the human is soon exhausted and falls on the ground. Arlo approaches the boy holding a piece of wood but he doesn't have the guts to hit him and he sets him free instead. Arlo tries to tell the boy to run away but the boy approaches Arlo and sniffs him until the dinosaur screams to the top of his lungs out of fear. Henry appears and the human boy runs away, which makes him quite disappointed. He tells Arlo that he has to toughen up or else he will not be able to survive and prompts him to hunt the boy down in order to finish his job. Arlo is terrified of leaving the borders of his house and farm, but Henry pushes him anyway. While walking across the river, Arlo is worried they will get lost, but Henry explains that they can always find home if they can find the river stream. The two of them follow the boy's footsteps, but the weather changes suddenly and becomes very aggressive. Arlo witnesses the sight of a lightning and becomes terrified. He stumbles on a rock and hurts his leg. Henry tries to push the boundaries in order to make Arlo stronger, but he realizes that he probably pushed him too hard. He picks his son up 
and they get started on the road back home. However, the weather gets more intense and the river brings more and more water. The two dinosaurs are in real danger. Henry lifts Arlo up in order to save him. However, he does not have the time to climb up himself, and he is carried away by the current. With the father gone, Arlo and his family have to do double the job in order to complete the harvest before the winter comes. Arlo carries some corn back to the silo but realizes that there is something inside, and it is eating their food supplies. When he takes a peek, he sees the human boy eating the corn and he immediately gets angry, blaming the boy for his father's death. Arlo tries to catch the boy but he escapes. The little dinosaur runs behind him but the two of them end up in the river and are carried away by the current. When Arlo wakes up, he finds himself in an unknown place and he is terrified. He sees a cliff and tries to climb up. However, he is not a skillful climber and falls back down. He needs an extra dose of motivation and finds that when he sees the human boy again, this time, he climbs up but the boy blows some dust on his face. Eventually, Arlo makes it up there but the boy flees. The dinosaur wanders around the place, trying to find a way to return back home but he is hopeless. Soon, he steps on a red berry and realizes he can eat that. He finds the tree with the berries but that is a bit high for him. Despite, he makes an attempt to reach the berries. However, he trips over and eventually his leg gets trapped under a rock. He tries to get out of there but doesn't succeed. When the night falls, Arlo is terrified and has no idea how he will get by. However, he falls asleep and wakes up the next day. To his surprise, his leg has been freed. A hole has been dug up. He notices that there are human footsteps on the dirt. Arlo keeps walking, but he has not the slightest idea of what path he needs to follow. Soon, it starts raining and he has to stop. He sets up a temporary shelter and has no choice but to stay under it. At some point, he hears the bushes rustling and feels scared. Nonetheless, the only thing that appears is the human boy. The human boy brings him some food, first a lizard and then a giant fly, trying to signal him to eat. Arlo can't eat those and then the boy brings him some berries, which Arlo eats pleasantly. The two of them start feeling better about each other, even though Arlo still has some bad feelings about the human. To eat more berries, Arlo follows the boy. The two of them walk to the edges of a cliff. When they reach a gap, the boy bites Arlo's leg and the dinosaur spreads all across the gap like he is a bridge. The boy walks over his body, and then Arlo drags himself to climb on the other end of the gap. The boy has brought Arlo near a tree full of berries, and the dinosaur happily starts eating them. However, a snake lands on Arlo's beak. Arlo gets scared and he falls off the cliff. The snake falls along with him. Arlo is afraid of the snake, but the boy appears behind the snake and bites it, moments before he dashes on his body and pushes it away. Right next, a Styracosaurus emerges from the woods and argues that he needs the boy to protect him. However, he and Arlo agree that the first one who will give the boy a name will keep him. While they spin various names, Arlo calls the boy Spot and he listens to it, meaning that Arlo will be the one to keep him. Later on, Arlo continues his journey towards home but Spot stops at a certain point because he finds a mole. The mole runs back to a field full of holes and gets inside one of them. Spot blows into the hole and three moles pop up, which makes the two friends laugh. Arlo tries on his own and he gets some of them out. After a few more tries, Arlo blows a huge puff of air inside the holes that launches all of the moles into the air. However, Arlo is scared when all of them crawl on him and he ends up in the river alongside with Spot. When they are out on the land again, Arlo offers Spot some of the fruit he is eating. Suddenly, the two of them start laughing because the fruit is causing them to see various illusions. Arlo sees Spot's head becoming huge while Spot sees Arlo growing some extra pairs of eyes. When the effects of the fruits are gone, the two friends continue their journey. One night, Arlo finds a field and shows Spot the beauty of the fireflies, just like his father showed him. When they take a moment to rest, Arlo uses some small pieces of wood to try to explain what a family is by outlining his family members. Spot understands the analogy and he uses some pieces of wood as well to signify his own family, which apparently consists of him and his parents. But as it appears to be, his parents are dead and Spot tries to communicate that by burying the two tallest pieces of wood that represent his parents. After Arlo does the same thing with the piece of wood that represents his father, the two of them start howling in a gesture of mourn. The next morning, Arlo realizes that Spot is having a bad dream. Later that same evening, the two of them are caught up in the eye of a storm. When he sees and hears a lighting, Arlo remembers that fatal night when he lost his father. 
Having no courage to continue, he runs back to cover. The next day, Arlo wakes up to a scenery of destruction. Soon, he is approached by a group of pterodactyls. Their leader named Thunderclap tells Arlo they are rescuers looking for survivors and then orders his minions to take a look around. One of the flying dinosaurs finds a wounded animal trapped under a tree and they ask for Arlo's help to remove it. In a matter of seconds, they manage to save a critter but the leader of the Nyctosauruses eats it. Arlo tries to get away from them but they can smell he has a critter on his own. Although Arlo tries to trick them, they are able to discover Spot. After they attack Spot, Arlo tries to save him by running away but they now stumble upon two huge Tyrannosauruses. However, the two large dinosaurs fight the bad guys and push them away, being quite friendly towards Arlo and Spot. Soon, their father joins and says they can't help Arlo from now on because they need to find their herd of longhorns. Arlo says they can help them track their herd because Spot can smell anything. Indeed, Spot uses his smell and finds the herd but now the Tyrannosauruses need one more favor. Butch realizes that his herd has gotten stolen and sends Arlo along with Spot to serve as bait for the thieves to come out. Arlo and Spot secretly make it on top of a rock and Arlo tries to roar. However, his voice is soft and Spot has to bite his leg in order to make him roar louder. This time the thieves hear him and approach him. These velociraptors are about to attack him but Butch jumps into action and grabs one of them. Despite, Arlo is attacked by the other ones. The attack causes the Longhorns to be scared and start running. While all of them run together, the Tyrannosaurs get attacked and taken down. Since he is in danger of getting run over, Arlo hides behind a rock. Although he is timid, he has to help Butch and attacks two Velociraptors, taking down one of them with his head and the other one with his tail. The thieves come against him but Butch grabs them midair and tosses them away. The thieves are losing the battle and they start running away. The tyrannosaurs roar against them and they also motivate Arlo to do the same. After they have won the battle, they retrieve the herd and run alongside with it until it's dark. Nash uses a bug as a harmonica to play some music. He really likes Spot and wonders if Arlo would be interested to make a swap and give him Spot in exchange for the bug. Arlo does not view Spot as a pet but rather as a friend, and makes it clear that the boy is not for sale or trade. Then, Nash puts his leg in the fire, and explains that his leg has been injured to the degree, or he does not feel anything on it. Then, the two siblings insist for Butch to tell the story of how he got the scars on his face. Butch explains that he has had an encounter with a wild and ferocious crocodile back in the day. The crocodile did him dirty when he approached a lake to drink some water. The animal bit his face. Even though he has that scar on his face, he was able to turn the tables on the crocodile and make him run. The next day, Arlo runs with the family and the herd again. Butch motivates him to show courage and lead the herd in the right direction. After Arlo bumps on the longhorns to lead them in the path they need to follow, Butch sees they have reached the right spot, and he is able to see the mountains. He tells Arlo this is the path he needs to follow to get to the river, and they part their ways. After doing some running, Arlo and Spot are happy to find the lake. However, they have to stop when Spot gets distracted by a human adult male. He and the old man stare at each other. Spot even makes a couple of steps toward him. Not knowing what is going on, Arlo stops Spot and grabs him to put him on his back. They continue on their journey but things go sideways again. Because there is a storm coming up and Arlo has not yet gotten over his fear of lighting. While Arlo stalls, the pterodactyls appear on the sky and they fly circles around them. Out of a sudden, the flying dinos attack. Arlo is momentarily dazzled, and the pterodactyls orchestrate their next move. All of them attack at the same time and they try to steal Spot. Arlo holds onto him back but he can't keep going forever. The pterodactyls take Spot, and they also push Arlo down the cliff. Arlo gets trapped while falling. On his attempt to escape, a rock hits his head and causes him to see a vision. He sees that his dead father helps him get free. The two of them start walking together. While they do, Arlo sees the lightings in the sky and decides to speak up. He apologizes to his father because he thinks he is responsible for his death. From now on, he will never cower again. His father turns around and admits that his death was his own fault, and Arlo had nothing to do with it. His father speaks back to him and motivates him by saying he is stronger than anyone he ever knew, making Arlo wake up and run towards the mountain Spot was taken to. Even though the ground is hit by lightings, he is not afraid of them anymore and he keeps running, while he does, he howls like Spot does, so maybe they communicate. Luckily, he hears Spot howling back to him and is able to find him. 
The boy is clinging on a tree and trying to not be eaten by the pterodactyls. Arlo rushes against them and gives them a good hit, but then all the pterodactyls attack him. The two of them are able to lift him into the air, but Arlo sees Spot struggling and that motivates him to do his best. He manages to escape their grip and uses his tail to break a tree. The tree falls on the pterodactyls and traps them under its trunk. At the same time, Spot bites Thunderclap and make a hole on his wing. While Thunderclap tries to escape, Arlo grabs another tree trunk and tosses it in the air. The trunk flies in the right orbit and hits Thunderclap, taking him down for good. But there is one more problem, the river is bringing more water. Arlo is afraid of that stream but he regains his self-control and decides to take action and get Spot. However, the water swallows both of them. Arlo sees Spot being unconscious on a tree trunk and knows that he has to do something about it. He swims towards Spot and gets a hold on him, moments before the water current takes the two of them on the waterfall. Luckily, they have received no severe damage. Arlo carries Spot out of the water. The next morning, the weather has gotten better and Arlo is real close to home. But they stop again when they see some humans appear. Gradually, they see that this is a human family consisted of two adults and two little ones. Spot is naturally attracted to them and wants to meet up with them a little bit closer. The man tries to sniff Spot but the boy takes a couple of steps back. After they sniff each other, the female adult approaches Spot. She puts her hand on his face to caress him. That makes Spot feel some kind of maternal love and he even closes his eyes to enjoy the sensation. Then, the two young children approach Spot and they play with him. The humans like each other and the man takes Spot on his lap. When Arlo sees all of that unfolding before his eyes, he realizes that this is the family that Spot should live with. The young boy goes back to Arlo and climbs on his back, but Arlo puts him down and pushes him towards the human family. Spot goes to him again but Arlo pushes him back once more. To make him understand why he is doing this, he draws a circle around the humans. This means that they can be together and Spot can have a new family. Now Spot gets it and the two friends share a hug. Spot goes on to proceed towards a new life with his new family, while Arlo also gets started on the path back home. Eventually, Arlo reunites with his mother and family, and they all hug together. After everything that he has gone through, Arlo has become courageous and he has earned the right to put his mark on the silo. He does exactly that, making his family and himself proud. Remember to subscribe to my channel, and we will see you next time.